welcome to this time of worship on Sunday, May 24th. No matter who you are or how you found us, whether you're a Trinity member or not, whether you're a Christian or not so sure, no matter your age, your race, your ethnicity, your background, your gender identity or sexual orientation, your relationship status, job status, immigration status, welcome. We are so glad you're tuning in, and we hope that you know you're loved. Now this is Memorial Day weekend, and so we acknowledge all of those who have lost loved ones while serving in the military. We also acknowledge that during this time, it might be difficult for families and friends to honor those loved ones or to celebrate this day in the way that they normally do. We hope you know that we're thinking of you. Now before we hear the beautiful prelude today, I do have a couple of announcements for you. The first is that during this service, we're trying something new. Toward the end of our service today, we will have virtual communion. If this is something you'd like to participate in, we invite you to pause this video and gather some bread and juice or suitable substitutes to have ready for that time in the service. Now we realize that people have different thoughts and degrees of comfortability with the idea of virtual communion. If that's not your thing, no worries, just skip over that part of the video. The second announcement I have for you today is that next Sunday is Pentecost a day when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. A fun way to celebrate this day is to dress in the color red. Now, we invite you to do that ahead of time, a few days before, to take your picture or the picture of your family and send it in so we can incorporate it into our Pentecost service. There's instructions in the weekly newsletter that goes in your email inbox each week. So check there for information on how to do that. There are also some great updates and information about the life of the church in that email as well. We hope you stay connected. And now, I want to thank all of you for tuning in and for all who made this service possible. Though we might be uh, separate in some ways, we are together in spirit. So with that knowledge, let us continue in a spirit of worship.
you join me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you and praise you for the amazing love we experience through your mercy and faithfulness. They sustain us and they give us the strength to bear the bleakness of our days and to weather the storms that are raging in our world and even the storms that are raging within us. God, we pray for you to shine the light of your hope into our days. We confess that our own faithfulness has been tested as we have witnessed our world unravel because of this pandemic. Forgive us for holding tightly to our own plans. Forgive us for the times we say no to you so that we can say yes to ourselves. Unravel the grip we have on our own agendas so that we can make room for your perfect will. Shine your light into our lives this day, O God. Remind us of your unlimited grace. Remind us of your faithfulness. Remind us that even when all else fails, your love never fails. In you, we have hope, freedom, peace, and new life. In you, we are able to rejoice even through the storms. So we pray, meet us today with your good news, that we may be renewed by the power of your presence. Bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. Shine in us and through us so that we can be your light in the midst of this unraveling darkness. Be with us and be with those whose lives continue to unravel with hopelessness, illness, war, poverty, sadness, loneliness, and injustice. Help us today and always to be your church. And now we pray the prayer that your Son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello everybody, my name is Elizabeth Stiller. I know we're all missing our church community, but I hope that everyone's staying safe and healthy during this difficult time. Today I'm gonna to be reading Jeremiah chapter 29, verses four through seven. So if you'd like to open up a Bible and read along with me, feel free to do so. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Bye. A couple weeks ago, I received an email from Angela Miles Beeching of Beyond Talent Consulting. She shared news of one of her clients who recently booked this incredible gig. Yes, a musician found work during a pandemic. He was paid to perform with a dream presenter. This news is incredible, shocking, and I think that's why she shared it. By sharing this news, she challenged the thoughts of so many musicians and non-musicians alike. She challenged the kind of thinking that keeps us small and powerless. You see, her email came with an important lesson. Quote, Beware of the victim mindset. Pay attention to the story you're telling yourself. Whether you're a musician or not, it's easy to slip into that victim mindset these days. With so many businesses closed and 
So many changes that have complicated our lives with increased isolation and financial challenges and the fear of the virus itself. It's easy to blame our circumstances for X, Y, Z. I can't do things I love because everything is shut down. I can't see the people I care about because we have to keep our distance. I can't reach out to those in need because of, you know, the virus, or I can't take on this new project because everything that's going on right now. We tell ourselves this stuff, right? And maybe that's fair. But maybe that's not the only story for us these days. Surely, at least at certain times, not in all the cases, but in certain ones, there's another story we can tell ourselves. One that doesn't leave us sitting at home, stressed, just waiting for the day when some semblance of normalcy returns and can go back to lives as normal. Hmm. Well, for any of us who have found ourselves in this cycle of negativity, or thought our new ideas or work were pointless, or blamed the pandemic for our problems, or just generally put our lives on hold, today's scripture lesson might be a good one to consider. Its connections to this time are startling. The lesson Elizabeth read for us a moment ago is addressed to a community who's going through a difficult time. And they're left with feelings of, they're left feeling small and powerless. Forced to leave their home and live in exile in Babylon, these people don't know what to do with themselves. They more or less put their lives on hold and are just waiting for the day when they can return home to their normal lives. With so many of the things that helped orient them gone, like their place of worship, these people feel confused, disoriented, helpless, stuck. It's a problem. By putting their lives on hold, they give in to voices and systems that keep them small. They start becoming exactly who their oppressors want them to be. Passive, inactive, confused about their identity and purpose, bound by their circumstances, stuck. And if they continue in this way for too long, they'll start to really lose their sense of self-worth. They'll forget their inherent value They'll likely forget the God who made them, the gifts they have, who God created them to be, and who God is calling them to be for others. If they continue to put their lives on hold, they'll really be stuck in this problem. But they get some good news. Not the news they were hoping for. No message of returning home. But still, good news. There's a different and better story out there for them. The good news of this passage is that they are more than the story they tell about themselves or that their oppressors tell about them. They are more than their circumstances suggest. God has a different story for them one that doesn't lead to a dead-end cycle of negativity, one that leads to life and creativity and human flourishing. God instructs them to build a life, not put it on hold. God instructs them to create, not to wait, to settle into this new reality and be who they are, who they are called to be, regardless of their circumstances. They don't need to wait for ideal situation to build gardens and homes and to enter into new relationships and have children and do good in the community, to be fully human, to flourish. It might sound like a laundry list of things to do, but behind these divine instructions is the belief that they can do these things. God believes in them. Unlike the voices that bring them down, God's voice is an empowering one. God's voice is affirming and life-giving. God gives them work to do because God believes they can do it, and God is looking out for their best interest. 
Although these are specific instructions for a specific community in a different time and place, the message here also speaks to us, to our situation. We are not living in exile in Babylon, but we are living in a new reality, in difficult circumstances that tempt us to adopt a victim mindset or put our lives on hold. But today's scripture passage reminds us that we're not stuck with that story, the story that keeps us small. God's empowering, affirming, life-giving voice speaks to us as well. The instructions to build a life in a new reality, to create, to care, to take initiative and flourish at this time is a message for us as well. You know what? We're doing it. I've heard so many stories of people stepping up and reaching out, taking care of themselves and others. We have people helping to feed the neighbors at the mobile food bank, people reaching out, uh, making phone calls, offering gifts, distributing food, sending cards. We have people who are helping the church stay connected and up and running through uh, virtual worship services and meetings and programs with people taking care of themselves and others. So I'd say, at least to some extent, God's message has really come across. We've heard that empowering, uplifting voice of God and we're doing it. But there are days when it's tough, right? That victim mindset, fear, Hesitancy, stress, and overwhelm has a way of creeping in. It's only natural. We're going to resist settling into a new reality. We're going to abandon creative projects. We're going to doubt. We're going to listen to the voices that keep us small. It's going to happen. It probably already has. But let's not get stuck there. Let us continue to live our lives in the present moment. Let us show up for ourselves and others. Let us choose God's creative and life-giving path. Let us believe in ourselves and the God who sustains us. Let us not put our lives on hold, but live, empowered by the God who loves us. And let us build, create, care, and flourish even now, especially now. Amen. As we gather here today in the sight of God to join in Holy Communion, know we are only a screen with a part. The God of all creation is not bound to the limits of time or place. God transcends our physical distances, imparts the veil between us, so that we may be together in this mystical place. Through God and the mystery of Holy Communion, we become one creation, one body, one church. 
God is with you. It is good to be joyful as we give thanks to you, holy God. You created us in your image and gave us life with your breath. Your love does not fail, even as we neglect that love. You liberated us from our bondage and continue to ease our burden. With joy and with all creation, we proclaim, please repeat after me, holy Holy, 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 God of power and grace. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are holy, God, and blessed is your son, Jesus. Your spirit descended upon him. He proclaimed good news to the poor, healed the sick, fed the hungry, befriended sinners, and liberated the captive. His life gave birth to the church through a new covenant, one born out of the Holy Spirit, whose power dwells within us today. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After dinner, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this every time you come together in remembrance of me. In remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus, we offer ourselves as a living witness proclaiming the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all those gathered together in this holy and virtual space. And on the gift of these elements, make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world. Your Spirit makes us one with Christ and one with each other. He binds, blends, and multiplies us as we minister to the world. As one beloved community of faith, singing your praises on earth and in heaven until Christ comes again and we feast at the divine table in perfect harmony. All honor and glory are yours, God, now and forever. Amen. This bread is made from many grains, from many fields, yet was formed into a single loaf. Because there's one God, we, though many and in many places, are one body. Join us as we partake in the body of Christ in remembrance of him. the body of Christ given for us. Let us eat together.
This fruit of the vine is made by many hands from many places, yet pours freely. Join me as we share in this blessing of the cup of the new covenant. The cup of blessing poured out for us and for all. Please pray with me. Eternal God, thank you for this mystery of faith. Where you have given yourself to us, may we go into the world strengthened by your spirit, in a spirit of generosity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into worship today. We hope you found some meaning in the service. If you would like to support the work and ministry of Trinity Church, you can do so by giving online or mailing in a donation. We truly appreciate the support. Before we go, we'd also like to thank all those who have helped make this service possible. For Pastor Renee and Becky, 
Janet, Terry, Sonia, Elizabeth, and those working behind the scenes, Nick, Vera, and David. It is truly the work of the people, and we are grateful. And now, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen.